Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. My lesson today is on the volume of a cylinder. Our objectives today are that you will find volumes of cylinders and you will find the height or radius of a cylinder when given the volume. Here's the question I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How are the volumes of prisms and cylinders related? So previous to this, hopefully you found the volume of a prism. Now you're looking to learn to find the volume of a cylinder. So let's talk about what a cylinder is. A cylinder is a three-dimensional figure with two parallel, congruent, circular bases connected by a curved surface. So here is an image of a cylinder. First thing we want to talk about is the circular bases. They are parallel to each other. Think of a can. Our radius is a straight line from the center of the circle to the circumference. To review, the distance around a circle, the perimeter is the circumference. So we call the perimeter circumference when we're talking about a circle or a round shape. We call it perimeter when it's any other figure, but a circle because it's curved, we call it circumference. So the radius goes from the center of a circle to the outer edge, which we call the circumference. And then we also need to understand the height, which is perpendicular distance between the two circular bases. So from the center to the center, or from the edge, the circumference down to the parallel base of the second, this is height, and it's always perpendicular to the base. So when we have a cylinder, our circular shapes are parallel to each other, and they are our bases. We have a radius from the center to the circumference, and a height, which is perpendicular, connecting the two circular bases, and we call that the height. Now let's talk about the volume of a prism. Previously, I hope you've learned that a prism is a three-dimensional figure with congruent two-dimensional bases that are parallel and connected by the height of the prism. To find the volume of a prism, you multiply the area of the base by its height. So the formula volume equals area of the base times the height. So this uppercase B is not to be confused with the lowercase B when we're finding volume. So when we talk about a rectangular prism, because the parallel bases are rectangles. We can say that it is equal to length times width times height. When we do that, it's because the length times the width is the area of our base. So our base is length times width, or you could say base times height, but length times width connected to the other face, and this is the height, because it's perpendicular connecting the two bases. We also can talk about a triangular prism. So our, this is a triangular prism because the two parallel bases to each other are triangles. We can still use the same formula to find the volume of this triangular prism. We're just going to say that we're going to replace the base in this formula with one half base times height because the area of a triangle is one half base times height. And then we need to multiply it by the height of the prism, which connects the two triangular faces. So now let's connect this previous learned finding the volume of a prism to finding the volume of a cylinder. So volumes of cylinders is a cylinder is a three-dimensional figure with congruent circular bases and similar to a prism to find the volume of a cylinder we're going to multiply the area of the circular base by the height. So we're going to use the same basic formula. The volume is equal to the area of the base times the height. When we're talking about a cylinder our base is a circle. And finding the area of a circle is pi times r squared. So if we replace the area of the base with pi r squared, here is our formula for finding the volume of a cylinder. Volume equals pi r squared times h, which is the same as a prism. Volume equals area of the base times the height. So that's what they have in common. Now let's talk about how to use the formula. We're asked to find the volume of the cylinder that has a radius of four inches and a height of nine inches. So let's label what we know. We know that our radius is four and our height is nine. So we're going to write down our formula and plug in what we know. 
So we have pi times r squared. Our radius is 4, so we plug that in for r. So r squared becomes 4 squared, and our height connecting our two parallel circular bases is 9. So now we need to multiply. 4 squared is 16 times 9, and then 16 times 9 is 144, and we still have to multiply by pi. So we have 144 times pi inches cubed. So our units were inches, so our volume is going to be cubic inches. And we're calling this, when you answer like this, it's called in terms of pi because we don't multiply. Remember, pi is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So you can, you would be approximating. So if you answer in terms of pi, if you're asked to, you just don't replace pi with a value. So pi can be used with 3.14. And this is an estimate. It's about, we've rounded and terminated it at the hundredths digit. So this isn't exact. This would be exact. So if we replace pi with 3.14, we're going to do 144 times 3.14 which gets us 452 and 16 hundredths inches cubed for the volume of this particular cylinder. Now it's your turn. I would like you to pause the video here, find the volume of the cylinder, and come back and hit play when you're done. Welcome back. So let's go through what we know. We're asked to find the volume, and we know that the radius is six and a half inches, and the height is five inches and we're going to use 3.14 for pi. So let's start with our formula. So to find the volume of a cylinder, it's pi r squared times h. So we know our radius is 6.5, our r, and our height is 5. So let's plug that in. Now we need to do 6.5 squared, multiply by 5. So 6.5 squared is 42.25. Multiply that by 5 and we have 211.25 times pi. Now they told us to use 3.14 for pi, so we're going to, this is in terms of pi, we need one more step. So we're gonna take pi and use 3.14. So 211.25 times 3.14 gives us a volume of 663.325 cubic inches. Now, sometimes we're gonna be given the volume and we're gonna be asked to find the height. So let's go through what we know. The height of the cylinder right here is our unknown, so we're going to call that h. Then we know the volume, the radius first, let's do that. Radius is 5, and our volume is 2,000 pi inch cubic inches. So I always start with our formula. Volume equals pi r squared times h. And I'm telling you right now, you start with your volume formula, and you plug in what you know, you can't go wrong. So this time, we're not solving for volume, we've been given volume. So we're gonna replace volume, which here is in terms of pi, 2,000 pi. So we're gonna put 2,000 pi in for the volume. We have pi, we need our radius, which we were told is five, so five squared, and h for our height, because we don't know our height. Now let's solve this equation for h. We only have one unknown. Five squared is 25, but I see both sides of this equation have a pi. So I'm gonna divide both sides of the equation by pi so that I don't have that to deal with anymore because pi divided by pi is one. Pi divided by pi is one, leaving me 2000 equals five squared, which is 25 times h. Now let's divide each side by 25 and 25 divided by 25 is one giving me one h on the right, and 2,000 divided by 25 is 80. So I know that the height of the cylinder is 80 inches tall. Now it's your turn. I would like you to find the height of this cylinder given this information. Please pause the video now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. So we're gonna start by identifying that our height is our unknown, so we're gonna label the height h. We know that our volume is 395.64 cubic inches, and they told us that the radius is three inches. So we're gonna put our formula down and plug in what we know. We know that our volume is the 395.64 pi, our radius is three, so three squared, and our height is unknown. 
Now this answer, this volume, is not in terms of pi. So over here, we're going to do this math first. 3 squared is 9, and 9 times 3.14 gives me 28.26 times h is all equal to the given volume. To solve for h, I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 28.26. 28.26 divided by itself is 1, giving me just h on the right. And if you use your calculator, this division, the quotient, is 14. So we know that the height of the cylinder here is 14 inches. Now we're going to solve one that we're asked to find the radius. So if we look with everything we've given, we're trying to find the radius, which we're going to label on our cylinder as R. We're given the volume is 226.08 cubic feet, and our height is 8 feet. So we label our cylinder. And they want us to use 3.14 for pi. Notice this is not in terms of pi. So we start with our formula. We're going to replace volume with 226.08. Pi is 3.14. R, we don't know, so R squared times the height of 8. Next step, we're going to multiply 8 times 3.14, which is 25.12, times the R squared. Now we want to solve for R, so we get to isolate R squared first. So we're going to divide both sides by that 25.12. Divided by itself gives us 1, so R squared is equal to 9. If you use your calculator, this will be equal to 9. Now, this is what r squared equals to. We want to know what r is equal to. Well, the inverse of squaring is square root. So we're going to find the square root of each side, because whatever I do to one side of an equation, I must do to the other. And the square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of r squared is r, telling us that our radius is 3 feet in length. Now it's your turn. I'm going to ask you to find the radius of the cylinder given the information. Please pause the video now and come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. So let's label what we know. Radius is what we don't know. They said find the radius, so we're going to label that R. The volume of the cylinder is 150 pi, and our height right here is going to be 6. So this one's in cubic yards, and this volume was given to us in terms of pi. Starting with our formula, plugging in what we know, 150 pi for volume, pi times our unknown radius squared, and the height was given as 6. So our next step is I'm going to divide both sides. Uh, well, here I multiplied 6 times pi, so 6 pi r squared is this simplified. Now I'm going to divide both sides by pi, or 6 pi. 6 pi divided by 6 pi is 1. 150 divided by 6 because pi divided by pi is 1, so 150 divided by 6 is 25, equaling our r squared. Take the square root of each side because that's the inverse of squaring. The square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of r squared is r. So our radius is 5 yards in length. All right, one more for you. Here's a real world problem talking about a swimming pool. I'm going to ask you to pause the video now, do your best, and then come back to see the solution. Good luck. Welcome back. So we have a swimming pool here, and we're told that it has a diameter of 16 and a height of 8, and we need to find the volume. So they're asking us, what is the volume of the water? So first, we're going to find the volume of the entire pool. We need to use our formula to find the volume of the entire cylinder because we weren't given the height of the water. We were given the height of the pool, which is cylindrical in shape. So we're going to plug in what we know. We don't know the volume. We have pi, which they're telling us to use 3.14. Our radius, we have to go over here. Diameter is from circumference to circumference through the center of the circle. So the radius is half of that. So our, we know our radius here is 8 if the diameter is 16, because a diameter is a radius plus a radius. And our height is 8, so let's plug in what we know. 3.14 for pi, our radius r is 8, so 8 squared times our height, which is also 8. If we do this math, we're going to do 8 squared, which is 64, 
times 8 times 3.14, which gets us 1,607 and 68 hundredths. Now, we're not done. This is the volume of the entire pool. But the pool isn't filled to the top with water. We're told that it is 70% full. So 70% of 1,607.68, we're going to multiply. We're going to write 70% as a decimal, and we're going to multiply. When we do that, we get that the volume of our pool is 1,125.376 cubic feet. Thanks for joining me today to learn about finding the volume of a cylinder. Don't forget our formula, volume equals pi r squared times h. And I thank you for joining me today at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. I hope you'll come back soon and have a great day.